Hello everybody, welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing a bit of showcasing some of the new bits that are going to be going in my new PC build that I'm about to begin doing. What has arrived and been delivered so far? Well, let's start with some of the important stuff. Power supply, um, basically Corsair RM650i. I don't have a great power demand in my system, so 650 watts is plenty. And I do like Corsair power supplies, I always use them. I think I've got a 750X in my current PC, which is probably a bit overkill now thinking about it, but this is the one I've gone for anyway for my new build. The RM650i. I wish I could have got it in white, but I couldn't. There isn't a white version of it. The 750 power supply, they do offer in a white model, but then it doesn't have the, the Corsair Link functionality, which is which I want because obviously I want to be able to manage my fan speeds and temperatures and stuff through the, uh, through the software on the PC. Um, obviously a good thing about the RM 650i, fully modular, so I only need the cables that I need, which should help me when I'm building the PC to keep it um, a little bit cleaner and tidier inside. Hopefully, this time round, when I build my PC, I am going to put a bit of time and effort into the cable management, because anyone who's seen inside my current PC will be horrified, because the cable management in that is terrible. Um, what else have I got? Um, a couple of ML140 Pro RGB case fans from, uh, again, Corsair. Uh, this is a, a dual pack, twin, two fans, with the uh, Lighting Node Pro. So again, I can configure and change the RGB lighting. Not I'm a big lighting fan, but the case I've, go, I've gone for kind of um, is all about lighting. It's, a, it's, a, it's got a big clear um, glass, tempered glass window on the side. So it's, you know, it's designed for lighting. And again, I think these will look nice. The plan for these, the two fans, is that they will mount in the top of the case. Um, next to my radiator for my CPU. And then the two fans that came, that come included in the cooler for the CPU will then mount on the top where you can't see them. So basically these will sit in the top of the case with their light shining down, which should be pretty cool. And again, they're ML140 magnetic levitation fans, so apparently they're really quiet. Even at high, when they're running at high speed to keep things cool, they are quiet because of the, you know, the magnetic levitation. Um, which then probably brings me on to the next bit then, which is, and it's still got the cellophane on, mostly, the Corsair H115i Pro RGB cooler. Now, I've been using a... Corsair H60 in my current PC for the last six years. Never had an issue with it apart from a friend of mine one day when I was um, tweaking the system, overclocking it and stuff, decided to reach in, grab the the you know the the actual pump mounted on the CPU and twist it, which sheared off one of the bolts that <laughs> retain it to the motherboard. And then I've had to do a kind of a bodge job to fix it. So apart from that, it's been a fantastic, fantastic cooler, which is why I went for another Corsair cooler in my new build. This is a 280 mil radiator with two 140 fans. So yeah, I'm hoping it should do a great job of cooling my new processor. And again, you've got the RGB on the pump. So it will light up and shine through the lovely glass panel on the side so I can see what's going on. And I believe with the Corsair Link software you can actually configure that to react to the temperature of the processor. So you can see at a glance whether the processor is running hot or cold or whatever. Which is probably how I will be configuring it when I do it. So yeah, looking forward to installing this. Again, very, these are very easy to install and fit in a PC. I've not done a custom water cooling loop. I don't think I will ever go down that road because it's a lot of hassle. <laughs> it 
it's a fiddly process and I'm not that great at building stuff and um, people I see have a lot of problems a lot of problems with fluids going funny over time certainly a couple of the big YouTubers that do specialise in you know PC building and tech I've seen a couple of videos from them recently where they're having a lot of issues with their fluids going manky and blocking up their custom loops which when I'm not being provided the, 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 the parts and equipment via the companies free of charge I don't want to risk breaking anything because <laughs> it costs me money um, what else have I got here obviously Windows 10 Pro license I'm going to need that for the new PC and it comes on a USB very handy um, Samsung SSD 850 Evo uh, 500 gig hard drive which I actually got if I can find it um, with a Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte drive these two came together as a bundle as a package deal with um, 100 screen cleaner so I got all three of these for just 150 pounds from a from a site from a company and I'm not going to name them because hey they don't support me they don't offer me any discounts or anything like that so hey presto you don't get free advertising from me so yes 850 Evo this will go in the new PC and that will probably become my C drive in the new PC my current one terabyte drive that I use in my current PC will be repurposed as a just pure gaming drive so all my games will install on the one terabyte SSD this two terabyte mechanical drive will probably go into my current PC as a as like a just a scratch disk, data disk, raw disk for storing video on and streaming stuff for the simple reason on my new new motherboard which I have which I'll get to in a move yeah my motherboard which is a ROG Maximus Hero X or 10 and these new motherboards it's one of the strange things I noticed on all motherboards as I was look, looking through motherboards and trying to choose which motherboard to include in my new build uh, they only have six SATA ports these days which is a bit restrictive I know a lot of people don't use um, um, like DVD drives now, CD writers and stuff like that, they don't use five and a half inch drives, drive bays, a lot of cases don't have them, so that kind of in some ways probably f makes people think, ah, you don't need those SATA ports anymore, but we do tend to use a lot more hard drives these days, and basically I've got my one terabyte SSD, I've already got two 256 gig SSDs in a RAID, which acts as my current sort of recording drive in my current PC I've got another 256 gig SSD acting as a data drive where I have basically my documents, OneDrive, videos, pictures all that sort of stuff, all your data stuff, I have that going to a separate drive so it's not on the C drive I basically have it transferred in Windows to a separate drive so all my sort of user stuff is on a separate drive um, and then I've obviously got another 250 gig 850 Evo which I'm currently using as my as again as a game drive which has my Skyrim series on so that one this one here will become drive number 6 which fills up all the SATA ports so the 2 terabyte data disk won't fit in <laughs> my new build so this will have to go in my current PC and um, replace some of the drives that have failed this last week which has prompted me to do this upgrade and new build and um, yeah in my so basically when I've repurposed my current PC it will just have 
um, two SSDs in it, one for Windows, one for data and stuff, and then it will have that as the recording drive for video and my streams and stuff um, when I'm rendering my videos. Um, obviously, I've got some cable ties um, for cable managing the, the project once it's built. Um, graphics card wise, I've decided to well, not decided to, I'm, I am keeping my EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 FTW which of course many people say FTW stands for for the win but anybody who uh, you know followed wrestling back in the good old days of the Attitude Era and that will know what FTW really stands for <laughs> um, yeah so this works really well and as I say it's come out of my current PC and it'll go into the new one 1070 goodness so yes I, I didn't buy a new um, GPU for the very real reason that graphics card prices are absolutely staggering at the moment because of all the, the data mining and cryptocurrency mining and stuff that is going on they've overinflated the prices of everything so until prices come down to reasonable levels I'm not upgrading graphics cards I would like to get another one of these though I think it's still available I think I can still get this card on a site which would enable me to SLI it not that SLI really is supported these days and Nvidia are trying to actually move away from all of that but hey ho right what else have I got then um, I've got some filters some dust filters some mesh filters 140 mils to go with my fans because what I plan to do is obviously have the fans a filter the radiator a filter, a fan, and then possibly a filter. And also on the back of my case that I've got, which I do not have anywhere here because it's it's mahoosive, it's it's in the hallway. Um, it's got a 140 mil fan on the rear of the case, which again I'll put a dust filter on. And then it's got two, two, 200 mil fans in the front. So I'm hopefully I'm hoping airflow. And um, cooling isn't going to be an issue. And then... Let me just have a look. How's the recording going? Oh, it's going good. Still got a few minutes left. Right. And lastly... Lastly... What is going to drive my new PC? What is the brains behind it all going to be? And that will be this little bad boy here, which I'm going to actually open. Consider this an unboxing. I know, tiny little box. I decided not to go for a a full retail box processor because a they're expensive, and b no one uses the stock corner anyway. So yeah. Look at it. It's an Intel Core i7 8700K. This is the daddy of processors at the minute. For gaming, anyway. <laughs> For gamers. Six cores, 12 threads, massive, massive overclocking potential, and easy overclocking. You know, you can get up to 5 gigahertz and around that mark without any issue. And then if you're prepared to spend some time playing around with your BIOS settings, you can get beyond 5 gigahertz very, very easily. So yes, what else am I missing? What am I missing currently? Um, I don't have my RAM yet. My RAM is hopefully being delivered tomorrow. I've got 32 gig of... Um, Corsair, again, sticking with Corsair, because again, I've used Corsair memory in my current machine for the past six years, and it's it's done me fine. So I've got 32 gig of Corsair Vengeance, 3600 speed, or 3600 megahertz speed RAM coming. RGB again as well, so yeah, pretty cool, 32 gig of RAM, that's overkill. 
Um, and then I've got uh, thermal paste coming Saturday, <laughs> the last little bit, because obviously um, the processor isn't. I think the cooler, I think the H. Now, I think with Corsair, from past experience, I believe these come with thermal paste pre applied. You just pop off a little plastic cover and stick it on. Okay, so I'm thinking, um, yeah, thermal paste. The thermal paste arrives on Saturday, and I've gone for something a little bit um, different. You know, I've gone for um, a product called from Cooler Master, their Master Maker Gel Professional, which offers, I think, a 12.5 value for thermal transfer rating, which is at the higher end of, you know, thermal pastes. If you want better cooling than that, you have to go um, for liquid metal and stuff, which I don't want to do. And you have to sort of delid your processor and muck about with stuff like that, which I don't want to do. Now, yes, the cooler, I know, the H115 and all Corsair coolers come with thermal paste pre-applied. So for anyone, you know, looking to just install one of these, it's just a case of pop the plastic cover off the... The, the copper plate, the, the thermal paste is there, whack it on your CPU and off you go. I don't want to do that, I'm going to clean this one up because I don't know what um, thermal paste cool um, Corsair use. I don't know how good it is and I want pretty, you know, pretty good, you know, thermal transfer with my paste because I'm going to be using the 8700K with this Asus motherboard which means I should be able to overclock the crap out of it I should be able to really get it you know up to a high frequency which will of course mean high temperatures which is why I went for the extra fans as well to give me that you know that extra cooling so I'm quite happy, quite happy with the, what's going to be, with the way the build is going to go. Hopefully it will go smoothly and everything will go together nicely. As I say, I do plan to um, try and do a better job on things like cable management and stuff this time. As my friend, my, my PC buddy um, knows, my best bestest buddy in the world knows, I'm terrible at building. I was very bad very bad things when I built my current rig. Things as simple as the motherboard standoff screws. I used about two for the entire motherboard. <laughs> so it fucking wobbles about them. And when you're trying to put, you know, memory card memory um, sticks in it and you know your graphics card, the fucking board wobbled and flexed. Terrible. It probably shorts out on the back of the case as a result of that. <laughs> And then, like you say, the motherboard screws then to attach to the standoffs. I've used about one. <laughs> so, yeah, I was very bad. Cable management is just just not a thing. In my case, there's wires dangling here, there and everywhere. Especially from the fans, because I've got splitters to do the power supply and stuff. And they're just a mess. And obviously, got Molex plugs running to them. Even though I did switch to a um, modular power supply, when I put the... 1070 in it when my graphic because I wasn't sure when the graphics card died in my cur old current PC my old or my old PC um, I wasn't sure whether it was the graphics card whether it was the power supply what was going on with it so I replaced the power supply first because that was the cheapest thing and it didn't fix it all I did was get some better cable management because from the modular power supply um, so it turned out to be the um, GPU which is why I bought the 1070 because the 780 Ti died but as anyone who watched the quick update video will know um, I've managed to resurrect it from the dead and put it back into the PC and I'm currently using it all I had to do was download a little tool called MV Flash and basically wipe all the BIOS and firmware off the card and reload the stock BIOS and firmware on it and Problem solved. And in actual fact, I think it's running better now than it was before it died. From the um, 
benchmarks I did last night just to test it was working. I ran like, heaven and valley and stuff on it. The scores and frame rate, very impressed. The stack card still holds up, and honestly, I would probably still be using it today if it didn't go wrong. But obviously, I have this big boy now, and oh, I do like this card. Especially for not just gaming, but for like the rendering and recording and stuff. It's good. I like it. And as I say, I've got my little processor. Let's not lose that little box. Someone will probably throw it away. <laughs> One of the other house people. So, yeah, this has been my little look at all the bits I'm getting or have got so far in my new build. Or will be in my new build. Screamy wipes. You see, I'll, I'll probably take that upstairs with me when I go and actually start using it. Because I need to get my other PC stripped down now. Or start stripping everything down. Got my SSD, my 850, got my filters, and of course my cable ties, and then of course my awesome and amazing power supply. It's a shame it's not white. I mean obviously in my case there is a shroud that runs across the bottom of the case that you can put in to cover this, so you'll just have basically a white tray across the front of the, the case. So, you won't see the power supply, except from, obviously, the back of the case, which is pretty much what I look at all the time, because I have the, where I sit at my desk, and I've got my keyboard, my mouse, my Nostromo, my Stream Deck, my webcam, and then I've obviously got my 42-inch TV monitor. Um, my PCs sit on a little um, cupboard next to me, and pretty much the back faces me, <laughs> so I've got access to all the USBs and stuff like that for plugging stuff in. So actually, thinking about it now, the tempered window on that case is going to be facing out the bed, out the window. <laughs> the people outside will be able to see how cool and groovy my PC looks inside, but I'm not going to be seeing it. I'm going to be seeing a solid white rear panel unless I decide to upgrade and get an optional extra tempered panel to put on the, the rear. Then I'll have glass both sides and be able to see straight through the case. That's a plan. They're not too expensive either, from what I've seen. Um, so that's it, basically. That's where I'm at in the minute. I would love to have shown you the RAM, but it's not here yet. I would love to have shown you the thermal paste, but it's not here yet. And, um, yeah, that's it. I will hopefully be doing, trying to do some videos as I start building and putting this stuff together, which should be fun. <laughs> that might be fun to watch. People can then tell me how bad I am at building PCs. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure to speak to you again and do this little video. As I can't do any gaming at the minute because I'm between PCs. So, yeah. For now, from me, goodbye. Very high properties on the 8700K with this. Asus motherboard means I should be able to overclock it to 